I feel that oftentimes it's easy to forget that Jesus chose Judas to be his apostle. And yes, I am talking about that same Judas, the one that ended up betraying him for just a couple pieces of silver. For it says in Mark chapter 3, verse 13, Then Jesus went up a hill and called to himself the men he wanted. See, these men, they came to him, and he chose twelve, whom he named apostles. Jesus says, I have chosen you to be with me, he told them. I will also send you out to preach, and you will have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he chose. Simon, Jesus gave him the name Peter. James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Patriot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. Scripture says that Jesus called to himself the men that he wanted, meaning that Jesus wanted Judas. Jesus knew from the very beginning who Judas was. He knew what Judas was capable of. He knew that Judas would betray him. He knew that Judas was battling his own sins, his own demons, his own pride, his own ego, his own flesh. But Jesus wanted Judas. Even in all his mess, even in all his mistakes, even in all his sins, Jesus wanted Judas. See, not only did Jesus want Judas, but Jesus placed a calling on Judas's life to preach. Jesus told Judas and the other disciples, I will also send you out to preach. Jesus has given Judas a calling to preach. Judas was called into ministry to spread the gospel, to preach God's word, to preach repentance. Judas was given a ministry. And not only did Jesus give Judas a ministry, he gave Judas authority. For Jesus proceeds to say, and you will have authority to drive out demons. At that time, Jesus was the only one known to drive out demons, as seen in the previous chapters with the man in the synagogue who was possessed by evil spirits. Jesus drove out those evil spirits and everyone was amazed. They were surprised. Jesus was the only one who had that power to drive out demons. And now he has given that same authority to Judas. What you gotta understand is Jesus saw something in Judas. Jesus saw past the betrayal. Jesus saw past the lies. Jesus saw past the thievery. Jesus saw past all the sin, and he still wanted Judas. When you give your life over to Jesus, Jesus may be a stranger to you, but you are no stranger to Jesus. Jesus looks past your sin. He looks past the pornography, the alcoholism, the abuse, the pride, the ego, the lies, the selfish ambitions, the worldly desires. He looks past it all and yet he still wants you. Jesus knows the sins that you are bound to commit, but yet he still wants you. Jesus knows the mistakes and the failures that you will make, and you will make them, but yet he still wants you. And not only does Jesus want you, he places a calling on your life, a calling to ministry, a calling to preach, a calling to sing, he places a calling on your life. And what we also need to understand as followers of Christ is God doesn't just give us a calling, but we're also given authority. We are given authority to cast out demons in Jesus' name. We are given authority to overcome our sin and our lustful desires in Jesus' name. We are given authority to walk in the Spirit. Even in all your sin and shame, Jesus wants you. Many of us hear about Judas and we look at him and we think, man, that Judas, bro, what a snake, what a wicked dude, what a goofy. But when we first come to God filled with sin, lustful desires, lowly and shameful, we are no different than Judas. In some way, shape or form, we are all like Judas. We all share some type of trait that Judas also struggled with. We are no different and we are no better. See, the problem that Judas had is that he never saw himself the way that Jesus always saw him. Jesus knew that Judas would betray him, but yet Jesus allowed Judas to follow him around, watching miracle after miracle, hearing teaching after teaching, hearing parable after parable. Judas was there for it all. He saw the lepers that were healed. He saw Lazarus raised back to life. He saw Jesus cast out demons and heal all types of sicknesses and diseases. He saw all what Jesus was capable of doing, but Judas never thought that Jesus was capable of loving him. There are many of us who have seen the works Jesus has done in our lives. We've seen how Jesus has blessed us. We've seen all that Jesus has been capable of, whether it's helping us overcome our lust, overcome addictions, saving us, keeping us, 
forgiving us. We've seen Jesus do it all, but we struggle with accepting the love that Jesus has for us. We didn't do anything to deserve that love. We didn't do anything to earn that love, but yet he freely gave it. While we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still yet sinners, Jesus wanted us. Before the apostles ever preached a sermon, Jesus wanted them. Judas was a liar and a thief, and yet Jesus wanted him the same way that he wanted you when you first met. As scripture says, we love Jesus because he first loved us. All that we have, all that we are, and all that we know is because of the love of Christ. Judas knew the sins that he struggled with. He knew that he was a thief. He knew that he struggled with selfish desires. He knew that he was a liar and he knew that he was a failure. But because Judas couldn't accept the fact that Jesus still loved him anyways, he continued to sin. It started with Judas taking just a little bit from the treasury. There's a couple dollars here and there. And then he started taking more and more. All Judas had to do was confess his sins to Jesus, repent, turn away from his wicked ways. And maybe, just maybe, he would have found mercy. We convince ourselves to believe that Jesus does not have enough mercy to give us. So we continue to fall deeper and deeper to our sins. We continue to reach into the treasury, taking from God instead of giving back. But the thing about sin is sin is never enough. Sin doesn't hold fulfillment. You will never be fulfilled with sin. So you're gonna continue to reach into the treasury. You're gonna continue to keep taking just as Judas did. And you're never going to stop until the day of your demise. Judas was so close to Jesus. Judas was right there at every teaching, every miracle, so close to Jesus, but spiritually so far away. See, when the enemy can get a hold of your mind and can convince you that you are not worthy, that you cannot receive the love of Christ, the enemy doesn't have to force you into sin. The enemy just has to convince you to keep on doing it. The enemy convinced Judas that he could never receive the love of Christ. He convinced Judas that selling out Jesus was an unforgivable sin, a sin that Jesus would never forgive. The enemy didn't have to force Judas to kill himself. He knew that Judas would do it anyways. All the enemy had to do was convince Judas to stay in his sin long enough, to reach his breaking point and watch Judas do his bidding for him. Judas killed himself because he could never accept the love of Christ. Many of us today struggle with accepting the love of Christ. But I tell you today that there is nothing you could do to earn it. There's nothing you could do to deserve it. And there is nothing in this world that compares to it. So stop comparing the love of God to the love of man. His ways are higher than our own. His love is far greater and so is his mercy. Receive the love of Christ today because it just might save your life. It just might save your life.